My name is Tony B. I'm B. And I'm Jen Bunny. <laughs> And we, we are the group chat live. I just want to say, last time y'all blamed it on me messing it up. <laughs> and this <Bitch>. time, <laughs> I'm so glad y'all are sticking with us. I'm so glad y'all are sticking. We are a work in progress. Y'all, the new season is upon us, and we are having a good time. Um, we've got the logistics together. We got the outline together. I like this for us. Got the new little studio. Okay, timing together. We was on. We're getting our little decor Ish. together, bitch. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, stick with us. Stick with us. You know, we, we love the love. We on First off, shout out to everybody that has DM'd us about the show, how much y'all love it, mm-hmm. listening and watching. Thank yeah. y'all so much. Don't forget to like Follow and subscribe. It's going to be all down there at the bottom. So make sure y'all do that while y'all listening right now. Yeah. I agree. How y'all doing today? I'm doing. <laughs> 10, 10, <laughs> recommend. 10, 10, 10, recommend. Or do y'all not recommend? Life in general? Yeah, adulting? Because adulting. Yeah, cause I'm just a little tired. I had the kids yesterday. And so <laughs> we were. <laughs> oh, I just was a mom yesterday. yesterday. We had fun, though. We went on an Easter egg hunt. For the moms that could be moms on the weekends. <laughs> ah, awesome. She called you a baby daddy. I did not call you. <laughs> <laughs> I did not call you a baby daddy. Woo, baby daddy. Baby daddy. Baby daddy. Fuck my baby, baby daddy. daddy. Fuck my baby, 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 baby daddy. daddy. Okay, y'all. Silently, just a little bit of pinchy beat. Shout out to Sexy Red. That's I all we got to say. I love her. Shout out to... I told him in the group chat today mm-hmm. that when Sexy Red comes to concert in Houston, we gonna I want to go. Y'all got to go with me. And Tony it said... It ain't going to be nothing but a whole bunch of little ass kids. Bitch. That's sad. So sad. I'll be watching our shows on YouTube. Like, <laughs> so sad. <laughs> Y'all, they're going to be calling us aunties at the concert. Exactly, so sad. Throwing ass. They're going to be talking about Jennifer. I'm going to look young that night. I'm going to look young that night. I'm going to put me some colored hair in. Oh. oh. Girl, not with me. <laughs> not <laughs> today. I don't mind my age. <laughs> One thing about it, I'm cherishing the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like it. Get it no. sexy. 30s are awesome. Get it sexy. You know what? Every time I hear that it randomly plays, you mm-hmm. know how they say you got something that plays in your mind all day? Mm-hmm. That randomly plays in my mind all day. I love day. that. Yeah, so shout out and to And I love that video. Shout bitch. out to the young coast. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to y'all. Y'all doing it. Y'all doing the little son son and to Beyonce, <gasps> Jolie, Jolie. Oh y'all, my God, Jolie. That's the one. I ain't really listening to nothing else, but y'all know. Shout out to Dolly Parton. No Dolly Parton slander ever on this show because we mm-hmm. love her. And she baby, she got about Dolly P now. Yeah, <laughs> Dolly P. It's Dolly P. It's Dolly, Dolly B. B, my girl. <laughs> but B, you did you did something right there. I don't really want to. I don't really want to say this show lying, lying. But you know, you did something right there. I don't like the hate that she's been getting online about the whole album. Cause I feel like. But you're biased because you no, but people are, be high. Yeah, I get exactly. so angry on social media reading the comments and because <laughs> some people they're just so dumb. They're just so dumb. It's a lot but of maybe they're, it, they're ignorant to certain things. I think people just like wake up and like to be negative. Like, oh, some I people be do. Negative. It, it, some it, people gets that, your, it gets people's eyes open. It you, gets people's eyes open. I think that people are just surprised and they kind of feel like even if it was bad because she has such a big fan base, people are going to hype it up even if it's right, not. Right, that's good. what I'm saying. And so they're saying for all these other artists that have been doing it, they don't get that same love. But like everybody if I see one shocked, my motherfucking com- comment about K. Michelle could have did and it better. And she sent her flowers. Uh-huh. Beyonce sent her some flowers. I couldn't be a celebrity. Mm-mm. I couldn't. Somebody wrote that today about Ori and Bag. They was like, see, this a prime example of why I can't be a celebrity. Now me and my nigga can't beef and beef. Because when I'm I go big back, big. y'all gonna talk about me. Yeah, <laughs> no. No, let me tell this nigga yeah, fuck out today. They got back together. They, they been they back been together. Been that man together. keeps telling us and her on the internet, <laughs> never. Okay. Hey, baby, say They're never. like, then, that's death row over there, baby. Yep, that's death row. Mm-hmm. That's death row papers, papers, baby. It is so much going on in the world. In reality, and in the celebrity world, and times are, like, getting so crazy. And it's like now that we at this age that we at, life is really... Lifing? Yeah. <laughs> and I think we didn't never think we was going to be at this kind of point in life where we didn't have to make, like, difficult decisions. I did, mm-hmm. but I just, I wasn't now, prepared. Yeah, I, I wasn't. I think I'm I just, young and turned. <laughs> 
You're not. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Like, I'm being. You're turned. Like, I just feel like we still too young and you to be young. suffering. You mean young. Suffering major losses or going through major things. So I don't really think. I don't know. It's really no, we're, if we look at other 35 year olds, a lot of them have been like, we're divorced now. A, a lot of things <laughs> that. That's a lot. Yeah. I, mean, I guess that's a major loss too. Yeah. Or something like yeah. that have had all of these major life experiences. Like literally we're closer to 40 than 20. So Not post- me. But you know. Whatever y'all want to say. <laughs> no comment. I'm the baby of the group. <laughs> Bitch, you used to... Buy some months, bitch. Exactly. Don't even... <laughs> I'm the baby. Say exactly. My cousin tried to do that to me yesterday. No, but I think... I don't know. I think... I don't remember my mama having, like, such major losses at this age. Or were we so young that we it didn't wasn't. know what was going on at this time? Because I'm like, how the fuck was you doing? You, If you feel how I feel right now, and you had some small child needing you, how did you do this? My mama just said she just kept going. Yeah, my mom said, say, I can't imagine having that. to go home to a child on my days when I just feel like there's, like, no light in the world. I also asked her, like, how did she ever get depressed or sad? And she was yeah. like, yeah, I did all the time. But, like, I couldn't neglect y'all. I still had a job to do. That's how I yeah. know I ain't ready for no So kids. she was I mean. like, I just had to get or over it. Or those kids are your light. Mm-hmm. Like, when you get home, that's, like, my, like, See you. Kind of like how I feel when I see Kobe. Okay. Okay. When I pick Um, him up and I've left him at my granny house all day. Well, that's how I feel when I pick up my child from school. (laughs) Your human child. Yeah, my human (laughs) child from school. Don't disregard all the dog moms. To tell me his whole day, and I'm like, put all your bullshit to the side because he's like, how you got home to manage? Like literally, I have days where I feel like life is is like suffocating me because it's so. I don't know how you say the word. It's like, it's just heavy. And heavy. so I need to get home because you still got to work. You know, mm-hmm. we we in the age group where our parents told us, regardless of how whatever is going on at home, you take your ass it's to school yeah. and you handle it when you get home. Mm-hmm. So by the time I get home, sometimes I just need, like, no noise, no talking, no nothing, and need to regroup. I would feel so bad because I would have to look at my baby and be like, baby, I can't give you nothing because mama can't give herself nothing. And I'm how do you go? Sure I want to get my like mama that. feel like yeah. that, like some days. Because she would come home, and she will go in the restroom and for 30 minutes. And we knew for 30 minutes we could not talk to her. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you could ask her something else out the door, but that was her time. Now that I'm at this age, that 30 wasn't enough. <laughs> that 30 wasn't enough, and she should have been smoking a sweet. <laughs> I don't ever remember my mama, she like, this, been going, a you know, for 30 minutes. But she did. I don't, she didn't never have a break from us. Now that yeah. I look back on it, I don't there was remember my mama doing that. Either. That was ever that was her only break. And still, we would sit outside of the restroom and talk to her still. Oh. And now that I'm older, I'm like, all she needed was thirty minutes to just regroup. Kids don't understand. As that. soon as she didn't hit the door, we tell her about our day, what we eating, where we want to go. This is this mm-hmm. in thirty minutes. We well, couldn't even. Let's get ask her Jennifer thing. since she's the only mom here. <laughs> How do you do, do? You ever have those feelings of um, being overwhelmed? Because you remember at one point she wanted to check into a place and just. Well, it, that stay. wasn't because I was overwhelmed. It was just because I just needed a break from life in general. Just like life, like bills, just like not just my child. Like I would do it when he was grown. Like I didn't want to do it yeah. when he was younger. I just want to do it when he was grown. Like oh, just a I didn't get that. break yeah, I from. She was going in. Yeah. I no, she was I wanted going. a break from just life and to gather myself to think about like what what else did I want to do in life? Because I feel like when he turns eighteen, I can have a whole new life. Like I'll have a whole, I can have a whole new life. I'll still be young okay. enough to, to get married. I'll still be young enough to travel. I'll still be young enough to do. Well, y'all got so newborns. Do you feel? <laughs> well, y'all got newborns. Do you feel overwhelmed? Um, I don't feel overwhelmed, mom? especially like being a single mom. I don't feel overwhelmed because th- I asked for this life. Like I didn't. Nobody trapped me. Nobody did anything to me to make me have my child. I was the one praying for this child. So when I get home, like like I say, he be wanting to talk. As soon as, we, soon as I pick him up, he got to tell me about his whole day. He want to know about my whole day. He want to know, like, oh, no, every, yeah, he wants to no, talk ma'am. about all of that. But I then, think it's different when, when you're in it, though, and you have a yeah. kid. Yeah. 
we're only looking at it from our point yeah. and how we've operated in our, I don't want, I'm not saying selfish is a bad thing, but like we yeah, are selfish true. with our time because we don't have nobody to, depending on us to give it to. I think that if we were in that situation like her, she don't got no choice. That's so true. it's like she better make the best That's of it a, and yeah. like it. And you won't have these, like I always tell y'all, you don't have this day. Like one day he'll wake up and he won't want to talk about his day. Yeah, he, is he's true. gonna wa- he gonna want to wake up one day. Yeah. He ain't gonna want to tell me about everything that happened at school. A communicating like yeah, your he's man. a different like, communicator. He gonna know how to ask his wife and his kids in the evening, like, "Hey, how was y'all day? Yeah, he's like, how was your day? How are you doing? Because he asked when Carter called, "How was your day? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was good, Carter. Even when he calls to ask for something, he always checks on me first. Yeah, <laughs> how have you been, <laughs> baby? <laughs> Yeah, he called me. Oh, he, he learning how to make Kool Aid right now. So he called me. He's in the middle of clothes. Hey, Nanny Tony. So how was your day? I'm and good so that's quarter. something we're we're practicing though. Like that's something that I want him to be able to communicate. Like that is something. It's big to me. Like a man. We all talk about men that can't communicate. That is they true. can't communicate. So I'm taking all that in and like, how can I little steps? Him only being twelve. Like the little steps that I can help. And I can't be like, okay, it's 30 minutes. I need my So my time is the time that I have driving from school to his school, from my school to his school. Whether I listen to music or whatever. And then I have another time when in the morning when I'm driving from his school to my school. Or when he, you don't you get up a little early to have time to get Yep, I have I get up a little bit early with that, and that's a sacrifice. I get up at like five. We don't have to leave the house until six forty five. So I leave I wake up at five just so I can have at least an hour to myself, just so I can move slow, so I don't be Carter, get up, you gotta just just some time to myself to get myself pray the black and then mama do trauma. my <laughs> the black mama trauma. Get up Get up I'm get gonna up. leave you here. <laughs> He definitely ain't going to want me to leave, but I, okay, I'm getting up. Like, I don't have to really yell at him. I just have to tell him, like, get up and get, you should have had your stuff ready last night. So mm-hmm. that type of stuff. Typical but, stuff. Yeah, All typical right. stuff. Wow. Well, since we're talking about grief today, mm-hmm. can I ask you, like, when you are going through those moments as a mom, mm-hmm. how do you handle that? Because, you know, Sadly, kids don't really understand Okay, so I recently it. talked to Carter about that. Like, sadly, there was, um, he's only seen me cry two times in life. Really? Yeah. Is that intentional? Intentional for me, yeah. Yeah, like you don't cry around him. No. You I just don't go, cry. okay. Yeah. So, um, because oh, he's see, so. Another yeah. reason I can't be a mama, because y'all know I like to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cry. Once I ain't never seen my mama cry either. <laughs> I, I think only that... at church. Yeah, I've but like never seen real her cry. cry like that. I ain't see her real cry to my papa. You know what? Mamas are really strong. They are. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah I've yeah, never seen yeah. her. You know, I be crying too. Bitch. Yeah, bitch. I like just me by a little cry. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes a little cry. She's the dog is sitting there looking, there looking at me. Okay, a little so. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> and a little sparkle. <laughs> you said what um, now? You said he recently. So, yeah, he. Um, we were talking, and, uh, you know, he said, I never, I never really seen you cry. I only seen you cry two times. And that was when Garfield died, and then um, I seen you cry at, you know, Papa Dennis' funeral. And I was like, yeah, you know, I don't, I'm not really a crier. And then he was like, because oh, Carter is very compassionate. Like, if he see mm-hmm. you upset, he he is, I, what, I don't know that word, like, he's connected. Like, he's going to take on empathy. your. Yeah, empathy. He takes on your, mm-hmm. your he's sadness. He's an empath. Yes, that's he, what that's called. Very Being much so. Impact. He takes on your <clears throat> sadness. He takes on your pain. Like he he will take it and he'll hold on to it. Yeah. And um, so the times that I've cried that he probably didn't know he was probably not there, or he or I, the the mama trauma go in the restroom, oh, go yeah. in the restroom and take a shower, turn on the shower, and when you get out, you put your super, superwoman cape back on and you go on ahead and handle your business. Ooh. Yeah, I ain't never seen my mama cry. Yeah, it's the soup. It's the that's the, and that's sad. I seen a um, it was Latoya Luck and she was on a podcast and she was talking about how um men never see their mama hurt or they never see their mama cry or yeah. they so they think that all women put on that superwoman cape and they be and that's you be so okay true. and that's not but that's not we really do be in there crying or we really do go through stuff we just don't really let our kids see. But it. that's intended too with the grief. Cause like our parents don't understand how we're um, 
how we're dealing with our grief different than them. Because mm-hmm. I know, like, in my family, the older people, they feel kind of like, oh, you just need to pray about it. Mm-hmm. Go on. And you need to carry on. Or, like, why y'all still talking about it on the birthdays? Or why y'all still bringing it? And in my mind, I'm like, this person, like, my papa was, like, the one. That's my best friend, love, like, all of this. So why wouldn't I want to talk about him all the time? Why mm-hmm. wouldn't I want to remember? And I feel like... The more I heal from my grief, the it's almost like I'm scared to heal too much because I'm like, I'm going to forget him. Like, I'm going to forget that voice. Mm-hmm. I'm going to forget. Like, I can still smell my grandpa. Like, literally, it's times where I'm like, ooh, like, oh, this, this, that, um, what is it, Old Spice? He used to put that cologne in the lotion. He used to make his own lotion and put it. So I can smell this. Sometimes I have a candle in my house, and I will not throw it away because that's the same smell of his cologne. But that helps me. And I think I would literally panic if somebody, mm-hmm. and that's my biggest Maybe thing. Maybe it could with. be um, his spirit just, you know, reassuring. Yeah, but older people don't agree. Like, I went I to agree. therapy for it. I, I asked agree. my family to go to therapy with me, like, three times mm-hmm. with my grief therapy. Mm-hmm. And they were like, no, we're okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm like... The but therapy okay. everybody handles grief differently, yeah. Yeah. and that's that's your journey of handling. Yeah, that is true. Versus, you know, of course, our parents are older, yeah, and so they've learned how to handle it their way. And then our grandparents are older; they learned how to handle yeah. it their well, way. Because my grandpa would just be going to fi- funerals, yeah. and I was like, uh, my grand used to go to you going to that funeral, funeral? Yeah, because I know why. Like um, when we went to Mister Dennis' funeral, I had just went to my auntie' funeral, like. Three weeks and later. I, but I had told that you not to really, come to that She told me not to come. But that really triggered my grief. Because with grief, I developed, like, really bad um, anxiety. So some people, when they grieve, they develop different syndromes. And so initially it started with me not being able to sleep. And then I would have very vivid dreams. Like, I still have them now. And that's how I know when it's time for me to, like, I have to, like, cut myself off and create my routine. But I literally at times can see us in my dad's casket, we sitting there. I can't see him. I have not. I'm not one of those special people that have got to see their dad, in, their mm-hmm. parent, or somebody in a dream oh, or I something. Have. I haven't got to experience it yet, but um, I can see it. But I can't see him. And for my grandfather, he we came from Houston in there. I can visibly hear, see, feel, smell everything, them bringing him out of the room so they can take him to the funeral home and hearing my mama scream. And that was the first time I probably didn't hear that. I think that was, really a whole, that was a very traumatic it was very, for It you. was very, very traumatic to the point where, like, in the beginning stages, I would literally wake up at night and I could hear that in my home. And I was just like, okay, okay. And I would get up during the day and I would just go to work. And I would get up during the day and I just go to work. And you know, at the time, uh, Crazy Man was taking me through hell. Mm-hmm. Them girls was antagonizing me on the internet. So I was just kind of like, this is over. And I was very shamed to be grieving. I, I, and that was one thing the therapist was like, why do you just keep saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I was like, I don't want people to pity me because sometimes mm-hmm. I equivalent like grief with pity and so i didn't want people to pity us because i would look at us like at the funeral and stuff people kept saying oh you and your sisters and your mom like we're so sorry and people were referenced that because my grandfather my was so too. she so didn't close want people to coming up he was a time. prevalent person in he was y'all and because we had grew up in the home with him he and right. grew up, i knew people pitied us yeah you can see people looking at us they was at the funeral was walking down and they were just looking at us i'm like these people pity us but it's not in a negative way it's not but yeah. i really Really yeah, it, and it really that. made me suffer in my grief. That's why I tell people all the time, you got to have some people around you that don't give a fuck about how you're, you know, want to hide it and keep it's not, talking not, to not you. not giving so, a fuck. Because so Brittany like, didn't. Brittany was not going to let me, like, you would call me and cry, but, like, Brittany was constantly... Yeah. And it was so helpful because she was like, I ain't, uh-uh, I'm not texting you. Brittany would literally call me. And then if I didn't answer, she would call back again to talk to me. But you needed those lifelines. Well, Jennifer, what does grieving look like for you? Um, yeah, it was. I guess you know, like I said, because you I'm have not... two different, you have two unique experiences. Three. Yeah, well, yeah, you have Three. a family member, then you've lost um, the love. Sp- of your yeah, mother. her love, 
And then, so like, what we also that? lost a friend. I yeah. never had lo- lost a friend. Oh yeah, Jenny. In life, I had never. Oh, I yeah, felt I like did. we are we oh, at yeah. that age. I didn't either. That was very yeah. Strange. I lost Trisha when was in. College. Oh yeah, right. But I don't think I didn't really understand things like like age. Oh, we were gonna get to that. But age has changed the way I grieve and think about it. With Trisha, I feel guilty. I did. I held a lot of I held a lot of guilt with that. I think how people die and how the relationships are, your grief kind of is different. Like Jenny, Jenny was talking how she finna explain it. Mm-hmm. Listen to how she gonna explain her dad's death and Mister Dennis death and Garfield death. And I think the way they die in the relationship at the state determines the grief too. So yeah. how was that? So I had never, like, I was looking at you, and I was like, Brittany didn't do this when she had the funeral. Like, I was like, you know, I had took off, took off work the day, like, She's the day about of. Dennis now, her yeah, stepdad. Yeah, my stepfather. Mm-hmm. When he died, I went to work, and it was my birthday. Like, nobody <laughs> knew. Everybody, I was like, mm-hmm. you know, put on my, yeah, I didn't tell nobody until after school. Until I told y'all first. Y'all were the first people I told. And then I told my co-friends. Like, they were like, you were sitting here the <laughs> whole time eating cake, like, and you held all of that in. Like, you, you, they was like, that, that, that we never looked at you like that how before. How did you but, do that? And why? How? Because, why is because I knew I had to go to work. Like, you got to mm-hmm. go to work. Oh, she's a believer in that. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that. Yeah. You gotta go to work. Like, I gotta go to work. Like, I no gotta. What's going on in the house? I literally she gonna go to work. Go to work. was putting my makeup on when my mom called me crying. So, I gotta go to work. She was like, You gotta work? Yeah, I gotta go to work. Like, I gotta go to work. So, I went to work, and like I said, I had to get caught up. He didn't know. I had to take him to school and pretend like everything was the same. Happy birthday, mom. He was so excited when he woke up, and, and I'm holding all of this in. and. So, I mean, until I began to look at things and actually plan the funeral, it it, it hit it will hit then. Like, you won't ever hear this person's voice again. I yeah. won't ever hear him laugh again. I want to tell him so much. Like, I forgot to tell him this and I forgot to tell him that. And yeah. you won't you won't do that again. And I'm like, but are we at I guess we're at that age where I I don't feel like we're at the age where our parents are, are dying, no. but I feel like a little kid. Funeral planning yes, made me feel are. like a little kid. They, I literally felt like we, me and my sisters was like little girls planning, like these little tiny girls planning a funeral for this big adult. That's mm-hmm. literally how I feel. I just, I mean, Y'all for so it grown. to be like, in my, <laughs> like I said, my granny was in the hospital, so a lot of it, I'm trying to help my mom. And mm-hmm. she, me and her aren't, Aren't we not even like this? We a little bit further than that. Oh, so <laughs> we a little bit further. Yeah, we're about that big. So um, <laughs> yeah, it big. had to be me constantly calling her, constantly. Hey, I need this and this done. Hey, I need this and this done. So even in that time, I had only a little time to grieve. Versus when I lost like the love, like a love that you know mm. what I'm saying. Hitch. I didn't was all her. I ain't gonna even that, that hit was so her. Sad. That was the saddest time ever. I remember we just all were at Tony House in the mm-hmm. bed, and I just oh uh, that just I heard her scream like just, yeah that was it was worst. a really I think the scream on the phone was the worst, but that funeral took me down. My girl took me down there. Ah, it but was just... then we went to Atlanta and we thought we was just gonna train. That girl slip on us for a whole day. Mm-hmm. I just, That's I when mean... I knew that somebody could like. I think I literally watched somebody's heart break mm-hmm. in front. It was literally and like watching yeah. somebody's heart break, and you can't save them. It was nothing we could do. We took her to Atlanta. Whitney was like, oh, we going to go, we're going to go here and talk uh-huh. about it. She was like, planned it, and Whitney planned it. Mm-hmm. So you know we was trying to, like, get mm-hmm. her there. But we watched our friend heartbreak in front of us, and it was like, oh. We, and we hurt, too, but hard. we yeah. can't be hurt. Yeah. Cause I, it was just yeah. horrible. Because like we were whole... so sad. Because we were literally a And we loved him, too. Yeah, like, but just watching Jennifer go through that, it was just like... Soul snatching in a yeah. very bad way. Yeah, it was. In a like, very it was. Bad it was like, don't cry, don't cry. Because if you cry, she gonna cry. Don't cry. And then it was like, let's cry was, together. Like versus how I can see, like you know, I know exactly what happened the day that my my uh, my dad, my stepfather died. I knew exactly that. Like you know, what I'm saying I, I could 
I knew exactly. It's my birthday. I'm having it. I knew exactly what was it. That day, I get bits and pieces of that day. Like, I feel like I, I passed out and came back to and passed out and came back to. Like, I could only get bits and pieces of that day. Oh, but yeah, it was like out. weird stuff was happening in my house after that. Mm. And, like, it was like. I mean, we already know he was kind of crazy. So, <laughs> kind of crazy stuff was happening in my house. Fit. Yeah, it, it kind of crazy stuff was happening in my house. But like Tony said, though, when it was Dennis' funeral, like those days after, I could, I was still having dreams about uh, going to the casket and nothing being there. Mm-hmm. Or and I'm like, okay, like he's not there. And then, but where is he if he's not there? Then where is he? Like there's, there's nothing there. What? What? But everybody's saying his name. Even after Garfield, I was like, okay, what? Like, what am I? Like, your stuff is still here. Like, what? What are we gonna do? Like, something is here. Like, I, I couldn't just up and move. Like, I couldn't up and transition my child to a whole another place to live and yeah. stuff like that. We just gotta kind of continue on. It with. was like that over there. Yeah, baby. That was I couldn't like, tell you because you're so scary. But yes, yeah, something like. Fell down in my house. It was so quiet. It was like early in the morning, and I had like all these candles by my door oh, in the shit. house. So you stop talking to her now. They talking to me tripping. No, I don't, don't tell you, you how much you there. internalize. Um, I don't even live there anymore. Your um. internalizing of grief and how it changes your mind it and does. how much it changes your head. Because even with me, it changed how I deal with people. It is people that I would have never thought that I would never talk to again. But for their lack of emotional intelligence to my pain, it made me look at them and say, "Oh." But is that really fair, though, Tony? Yeah, I it feel is. like that's fair. And let me tell you why. I feel like that's and fair. And let me tell you why. Because you can't, the gr- you can't we put gr- best, we friend, best friend um, expectations on people no, no, no. that are not. What grief, one thing about death, it has very much softened me to understand that. Every single person deserves a bit of grace. Mm-hmm. And everybody deserves it. Because when people go home, you go home and the whole world crashes down. Because I understand that I have went eight hours of smiling to get home and spend six hours of crying. Mm-hmm. So now in my mind, I treat people and come to people like, oh, you know what? You probably are being rude. You probably are being mean. But I don't know what you're going through. Yeah, it's not personal. And so when people are intentionally mean or you're not aware of things, like Jennifer tell you, whoever that was that texted her and talked to her the day of her birthday and said, well, did you hear about your stepdaddy? It'll forever be up with me with them. Because in my mind, that was not emotionally intelligent because you knew what had happened. It's her birthday. She probably did know and didn't want to address it at that time. One And another thing, grief teaches boundaries Uh and how you have to be standing on Mm -hmm. business Uh when it comes to your boundaries, even if it's your family member, even if it's the person you're dating, even if it's yourself and creating boundaries with yourself. I agree, but coming from a counseling standpoint, it's hard (laughs) to put expectations, and you shouldn't because you'll always be let down. Yeah. To like put expectations on because everybody people. don't think the same. Yeah, because yeah. everyone doesn't think the same. So I do like that you said giving people grace mm-hmm. because you don't know what someone is going through if they're mean one day or if they have an attitude. It's always nice and don't assume that they just being mean just be mean. Yeah, because yeah, like, like I said, I, it's not personal. Yeah, it's all not. The time. So I don't want to put expectations mm-hmm. on them. You could just only operate in control you and how you yeah. react in the situation, but be appreciative of the people that do show up and support yeah, yeah. in the it ways does. that you need. And maybe if you felt like that person was not, I don't know if cutting off the friendship is okay. Maybe if the friendship is worth it, maybe having a talk to them about oh yeah, how I felt, you know, I yeah. really thought you would be there instead of cutting. It made me love y'all even more. I ain't going to lie to you. Losing my granddaddy made me just love y'all so much. But when I lost my daddy and how y'all came back to it, because you know, I had death, grief, Tony relationship, had a very, grief, very hard time in 2023. So, like, it really showed me, like, you, you can really have some real core people. Mm-hmm. Some core people. Like, some, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, life be hard. Grief be really, I don't know. It made me look at y'all like 
Because y'all had went through it before. Well, I mean, of the planning-wise, y'all went through it before me. So it made me realize how strong y'all were. Not that I didn't think y'all was strong, but these bitches will cry. Like Brittany, these bitches will be like on the phone. Brittany I is remember automatic. One day, we was just at Britney's house one day, and y'all both started crying, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> we gonna cry with episode yeah, they, too. <laughs> they just be they would just I mean they would just cry y'all better and start like, giving y'all closets and cry y'all just it just <laughs> made me realize like I mean I kept thinking about like as Brittany cause we were really here when while Brittany was planning her grandmother's funeral yes um versus Tony have her sisters mm-hmm. Brittany yeah. didn't have as, she was like a grown yeah, Brit- like yeah, shout like, out to Brittany Brittany she had to, it, was yeah. it was a Which lot I was like, like, I ain't never planned no funeral I know and, and, like, and I, I kept saying before, Brittany didn't do this before, <laughs> like you know somebody told us y'all are grieving before your granddaddy passed cause we had dementia so we knew so we kinda had already knew what was happening Brittany knew what was happening with her grandmama but every time was like Brittany you need to really focus on your mental Oh no, I gotta take care of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brittany, you need to focus on your mental because I don't want you to slip. Take care. I gotta take care of this. And Brittany really showed me like sometimes you gotta have your emotions, but you still yeah. gotta take, take care, care of business. business. Yeah. yeah. And because it, chuck like, it up and a go thing home. with the mom. If nobody else does, who gonna do it? Like, yeah. If she's a mom and she can't, doesn't have time to, like, you know, really, you know, sit in the corner and cry like we do or, or <laughs> something like that, that, like, shit still got to get done. And so in, in that particular instance, shit still had to get done. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really get a chance to, like, it's kind of like planning, and I, I don't want to compare the ending of a life to the beginning of another life, but like planning a wedding when like when yeah. you do all that shit yourself, you don't really get time to like sit yeah. in it and, and enjoy and I, it. Right. Like, That's, I agree all with of that, that kind like of stuff. Planning the funeral, you really don't get that time to grieve. It was like I was you like, okay, this guy even when Jennifer came to the funeral because it was out of town, I was like, okay, this gotta get done. This gotta get yeah, done. Like, so was. the food was like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. And so I didn't really even get time. time. Do you think do y'all feel cause y'all knew until I'm a year with with mine. So I I've started the steps do y'all think y'all have started to work on your grief and address it or y'all still in that stage where y'all like i'm not ready to touch that this pocket there for a later day well what i can say is about that is my age has really affected the way that i grieve or even accept death Mm -hmm. and understand it because when we were in college and tristan died i didn't I was like, oh, no, that's horrible. <laughs> I made us move our whole apartment. Yeah, she made us move our home. I was like, oh, that's horrible. I can't believe it. But, like, as I've gotten older and really understand what life is about and how sacred it is and how, you know, we're not – we're at we're Sacred Stone Studios. Like I know. <laughs> but, Such a mommy. God be on time. Yeah, Sacred Stone Studios. Shout out to my boy. Okay, but – um. Um, to know that how, you know, fleeting it is, it really makes me appreciate life. And, like, I'm I'm afraid. I'm still, like, increase the fear of death. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Like, because I don't want to leave yet. I'm not ready to go. <laughs> you know, I'm not ready I to go. Not. We got trips to go. We haven't went to Greece yet. Yeah, so I, in the aspect of how I um, deal with grief, I don't. <sighs> so you're pocketed for another day. I don't know. Like I just, I really don't know how what what I I've retreated more into myself. Yeah. But you came back. I would say you did. You back. Mm-hmm. You so I don't a bit. my coping strategies, I'm still trying to figure that part out. Yeah. Even with all the counseling stuff and knowing all the things and what you should be doing. Yeah. It's yeah. different when it's you. you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like you can give the advice, it. but it's, can you take when you that advice? When you got to sit in those time, especially when you don't have nobody at home, don't nobody talk about that. Like when you have to grieve and everybody else that's grieving with you, like for me, mm-hmm. I brought this up when we went to our one year thing. I said, y'all get to grieve with a spouse in the house with y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. My sisters are married. Mm-hmm. My mama married. But I got to go home and grieve by myself. Mm-hmm. And it that make the grief, like, loud. Mm-hmm. That give it, like, a sound, a voice, a t- like, damn. But then it also made me be like, you know what? You're a lot stronger than you think you are. Like, you you hear that? Like, what can I do to develop? I, I promise, like, I want everybody to know this. 
grief seems so dark in the beginning. Like it's so it's so dark. And I know you looking at it and you like, man, I am um I can never see my way through this. And um it's really, 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 really hard. Mm-hmm. And you like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this. And you probably like month two or three in the beginning of it, but I promise you, like in a year, you're gonna look back. And gonna say, God, thank you, because it's not gonna feel as heavy, mm-hmm. and it's gonna be a little lighter, and it's gonna be a little softer, oh, and um, your hands. stuff don't be <laughs> stuff don't be hurting that much no more. So for all y'all that's been lost a parent, or you know, you and y'all beginning stages, I promise you, man, it's dark like now, but it won't be like that like forever. Like getting your words, start reading the Bible. Find you a routine. I know I keep preaching to y'all about a routine, but a routine saved me um, with my grief. So y'all get y'all a little balance and address it because it be real. You lose somebody that you never thought would come out of your world. Yeah. And you got to wake up the next day and say, I it have to still go. It just doesn't seem real. It just, yeah, it's surreal. Death, it's surreal. And it seems like it's just, unfair it's just to be un, happy. I don't get it. Like, and that's I can't how process. I feel after Garfield. Like, do, do you supposed to be like, I'm, yeah. am I going to ever like be this happy ever again in life? Like, is that bad? Like, I was, you know what I'm Should saying? Should I, I feel, be happy? Yeah, I still talk to his, like his best friends and stuff. And so I'll be like, you know what I'm saying? I post all this stuff and they like it. And they be, you know what I'm saying? And, they, and one day one of his friends, he was like, Looney was like, <laughs> Looney was like, it's okay for you to be happy, sis. Like, we still want you to be happy. Like, <laughs> we still want you to go on with life. I said, that nigga probably wouldn't, but mm-hmm. yeah, but I mean, yeah, like, even like a just time past. would be had if that man was still. A- Y'all <laughs> shout out to Garfield. We had a time that summer before that happened. That was. It was we fun. had never ran, scream, hollered, fuss, fight, cook. His was uh, so birthday was yeah. just like, just. Just passed, and so uh, usually, you know, like Tony said, as time go, like you don't want to forget that person. So, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't post all this a lot of stuff about his birthday, yeah. but I did. You know, it ain't like he can read it anyway, like or like he he's can. Like, they got Facebook in him. <laughs> They got Facebook. Bitch, if Kim Porter could talk the folks, he can see the shit. <laughs> well, that's the problem. Oh my god, man! No, that ain't uh, Kim my Porter. Papa be seeing my post on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, Shout and out I to think, uh, yeah, and I think about stuff like that. Like they can't really see this. Like I'm not gonna do a whole lot, but you know what I'm saying. But in my private time, you know, I I pray. You know what I'm saying. And but if, but people that don't pray, it's other ways. You know what I'm saying. Like Tony say routine. Like after a while, you know you. It's sad to say, but you kind of go on without them. But you need to pray. Y'all need God. Some people go that judge don't believe. In the word. Have, I mean, I'm, okay, I'm going to ask you this because I had a question about that. Has death or, 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 um, or you know, death of a loved one challenged y'all's yep, faith yep. in any way? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It made yeah. me how? God real. It made me see God real. And then it, how it, it went, made, at first, it kind of made me angry. Mm, I can like, see it, that. Like, how could, like, he was just trying to get himself together. Like, why would you do that? Mm-hmm. Like, why? Why would you like? Why would you do that? Like, that's our problem. But now. yeah, <laughs> problem but I'm like, like, with, like with my dad. Like, you, you were suffering. Like, you, you, you didn't yeah. want to continue to do this anyway. Like, you didn't want to. Oh no, you were I finding out. Like, not out. Like, he wasn't trying to kill himself, but he didn't want to. Like, he was different dialysis treatments because he didn't want to continue to go to dialysis. Like, it, it was different stuff. But it was just one random day. You. Yeah. I Doing still that, like, don't think my grandpa would have. I don't say that, and that's one thing. This the longest we didn't ever been without my grandpa, and I just don't think he's happy without us. I just don't <laughs> believe that in my heart. Well, if he's, he's not happy without me, us, if he haven't popped up, that means he is. Like, it, so <laughs> oh, you a lie? That's what my she said. My is not happy without us. My now, mama friend it's really said hard to adjust, it's really hard to adjust. Like how they like Easter was big. My granddaddy would give each one of us a hundred dollars. We were supposed to get our hair done. We would have Easter outfits. We would go to church. We would eat, and we had to have Easter dinner. This is a very triggering holiday. Valentine's Day is triggering. Um, Father's Day is about to come up. That is triggering. And I also deal with it in the grief is um, do I not grieve enough for my dad? Do I grieve too much for my granddad? Oh, granddaddy? that's yep. a good mm-hmm. one, Tony. And the yeah. reason why is because oh, that's and, a I, good and one. I have a lot of guilty grief when it comes to my daddy because mm-hmm. I saw my daddy the weekend before he passed and I did not want to talk to him. And I was mad at him 
because I was grieving my granddaddy and I felt he didn't do enough to say, hey, this my time to shine. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't been there all day life, let me step in. But I was asking for something that he couldn't give me himself. Mm-hmm. And it was an unfair thing to put on him. So when he died, I saw him the weekend before. We had probably like a two-minute conversation, and he kept trying to talk to me, and I would not talk to him. And it was so weird. He was in a motorized chair. My daddy was scooting around. And um, he was around a birthday party, and he kept trying to have a little smile so I could talk to us, but we wouldn't. And he sent a text on Sunday, and he said, hey, y'all, my phone, I don't have a charger. Call me on the house phone. Call me before y'all leave. And I still have not opened the message. I can read it right there, but I haven't opened the text thread to open it. And I remember him calling that week, and I went and answered, and then getting it. So I do suffer with a lot of guilt because I feel like, um, okay, go on to say what you want to say. Yeah. I fi- no, I was going to say I agree with Tony. Like, I had that type of guilt, grief, like, because – in my life, my stepdad was the prevalent person. Mm-hmm. So when my real dad died years and years ago, like I didn't grieve him like this. I actually went on to back to school. Mm-hmm. Like it, like I went. It was because I don't know if you like this person is more like I don't know. Not that your your yeah, yeah, grandpa yeah. was bigger than your dad, but that was like. I told yeah. my stepdad everything. I told him the first time I had my period, told him the first time I had sex. Like, me and my stepdad and don't be tight. ashamed of that. You shouldn't yeah, yeah. be ashamed if you have a, a deeper connection. Yeah. Right. That's what I said. It was just a deeper and I always connection. Can I help help that? I was like, Daddy, why would you die? Like, we did not already lost our granddaddy. Why would you just want to steal the shine mm-hmm. and die on a random Friday? I think it's just, it was very hard for me to adjust to thinking that two men in my life who play a role, you know, I'm getting myself together finally. Is we moving in a direction. Like I'm not gonna get to experience certain things that my sister have experienced with them. Oh, so yeah. that yeah. makes me internalize. Like I'm graduating Girl, Amy, in December. I used to always say, this is really hard for me right now to mm-hmm. be happy about graduating. Because mm-hmm. I feel it's unfair. Well to he do will this. want you to be happy about it. Yeah. He would be very excited about it. Me with my faith in, in death, I, I, well, it made me think a lot more about heaven. It made me think about if heaven was real crowded. <laughs> it made me think of my people back. <laughs> it's think about, like, what's she doing up there? So, but as far yes. as, like, being angry, I never felt angry because of, yeah, I, w- I understand why you would because he was young. And it was like he had so much more life to get. He had a new baby and all that stuff like that. But, like, in my instance, my granny was sick. And she, it just looked like torture, Mm -hmm. what they were doing to her. Mm -hmm. Like, all of the pro, like, at one point, they had to probe with a needle in her arm to find a vein with, like, this little ultrasound thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I know this cannot be comfortable i know she hated needles she hated pain so when she passed it was like okay but as far as like if i would have lost i think about people who lose children right Mm -hmm. i don't know how i would be able to process yeah. That to be okay with yeah, that. The saying is, you're not. I'm not supposed to bury my child. Yeah, like yeah. It just, I'm not I just, to bury I just, I child. cannot. Like if I had a kid, and I, I just could not understand, and I probably yeah. would be angry, or you know, n- maybe cause me to not believe. Because why it, would you take away my baby? It yeah. helped my grandmother mm-hmm. though. It, it's gonna sound so bad in the sad. My green, my dad's family is are not very emotionally intelligent. So they are not very, we're lovey, and my daddy and them family not. Mm-hmm. But it really showed my grandmama that. And so even though It showed her hard, how to be loving? Or yeah, it showed her oh. to be loving, and she can, um, now we still are a little much for her because we're very in tune with our feelings. So like my mama called and was like, hey, you probably want to call the girls. They having a hard day or talk to her. She just won't talk to us for a couple of days. That's my daddy do. But we know <laughs> that the reason why she's not talking because we've over, over love um, and emotional, over or like the kids say, "Love you, mama" and stuff. But she is so in tune with that more, and she was a good grandmother to us. But it really heightened her emotions, and it it makes me happy because she's like we come around, we do family stuff a lot more. But I hate it had to be because that, we lost my right. dad. But it really helped her. Did it soften her? 
No, we are that's pray. okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and some people are, especially at that age, who they are is who they are, bitch. It's not going yeah. to change it. We got to love or, them. Or, I mean, you got to think about back grief. in the day yeah. how mm-hmm. they acted about death. Like, how they uh, back in the day, they didn't do as much as we did. They, they did. Didn't and times are totally different. Yeah, yeah, they, they didn't, didn't communicate. Have time. They didn't have time. And they didn't have the resources. We That's got all kind of resources. Y'all, y'all can talk to your insurance companies. Mm-hmm. They will connect y'all with... Um, emotional uh, for counseling through your jobs. They the do. state yeah. have counseling. My counselor live way in another state, and we, uh, my therapist, she, uh, we yeah, do video Zoom. counseling, and I met her through friends. Your yeah, church offers them, the state offers them, like, get some help. And I'll I, put, like, I will some put help. some resources when we post yeah. this. And I agree, Jesus. like, I didn't even take a mental health day, like, until yeah. after, like, oh, bitch, take, take yeah. yes, take your mental health days. They yeah. are available for you for a reason. Like, take your mental health days. They are very important. Like, you know, and in the school, and like where we work at, you only get three. You only get three funeral days. So I, I just feel like you should take those. Take try you to get, take your, all your district gets funeral days. Yeah, yeah you get bereavement days. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't even know that. Pa- awesome. You get a parent and a parent okay. and a parent, but I don't think you get a you get a I don't think you get a sibling, uh-uh. which sucks. You get a child, well, you can still a take spouse. A you get a child, a spouse, and a, and, a, and a parent. Yeah. Okay, so this is what I want to ask y'all. Um, what are some things that we can tell people? Let's say they are in the thick of it. Mm-hmm. In the thick of their grief, you know, cannot turn it off at this point. What are some things that maybe you have done or what they can do to, you know, help pull them out of that dark place that they are in? Hi. Going to church, reading your devotion, reading your Bible. I literally now when I talk since Saturday night, y'all gotta get on YouTube and put in daily prayers and they have prayers dot com. I will sit that on the side of me and that's what I listen to. I God is so real. <laughs> Grief, if nothing else, God's so real. Y'all better tune in with that man and get in that Bible. Cause it talk about it in the Bible. It talks about how he can help you. He hear your silent cries mm-hmm. and all you have to do is reach out to him and seek him. And trust in him and know that I don't know what he looks like now, but where it's going to, I'm gonna trust you to go with it. That's what's gonna help me. I ain't gonna leave a lot of y'all getting y'all word. Jennifer, what would you what are you doing? Um or recommend. Get out of wherever your dark space is. Like mm. you know how they you say that your house is so it's quiet but it's loud. Like let's go out, let's get some sunshine. Let's just if you go take a walk in the park, like if you just you ain't gotta go out to a party, you ain't gotta go out. You could just go like me and B used to I used to sit at her house all the time, just go over there and just sit down. We ain't talking, <laughs> we ain't doing nothing. We just over there looking at the TV. But the same is. shit I could be doing at home, but you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm here with yeah. somebody. You know, like even even as a parent, like Car- my child don't understand grief right now. Like he he saw it happening, but he you know what yeah. I'm saying he you know what I'm saying. So that ain't not, that ain't a person that you can lean on. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Even if I you know shed a couple of tears, I'm not gonna go to my one of my friend houses and and just sit there. Like I don't have to do nothing. Just sit there. So kind of get out of your wherever it's dark at right now. Like if it's. If, like I say, if it's your house, just get outside. Even if you have a porch, yep. just sit on your porch. Sit for a on your bit. porch, put your feet yeah. in the grass. Yeah. Buy yeah. something. I go to Target. Mm-hmm. I would, I would, uh, I would say grief <laughs> therapy. <laughs> Even shopping. if I don't buy anything, I literally get a buggy and I walk around Target. And that is I'll, like a, literally sometimes it is a breath of fresh air. I know in the beginning when I started doing it, I would cry. Like, by the time I made it around to the other side of the store, I'd be crying in tears. I think, but I would just breathe a little bit deeper, and I'd be like, okay, I can go back and do it. I think that whatever, before your grief started, whatever you really, really, really enjoy doing, that one thing that made you happy, as long as it is healthy. Yeah. As long as it is healthy, I think that you should indulge in yeah, that yeah. more. I also think that having a person that you reach out to um that is not judgmental and that you can just be open and cry with is something that is immensely helpful yeah because just having like jennifer said having just being in the presence of somebody or talking to somebody without even having to explain anything Mm -hmm. you know just being there holding the phone when you feel very very weak or sad Mm -hmm. um 
it can be very, very helpful. So I would suggest having a friend or a family member find one of those now. And if you don't have any of those things, then there are phone lines and hotlines that you can contact. And we'll put that information Mm -hmm. down there because you should not sit in it. You should not sit Mm -hmm. in the darkness because it will suck. Okay, too. Your life away, it will suck your joy. Mm-hmm. You have to keep moving. Um, if it's just it can lead into other stuff, yes. like hard depression. Yeah. And a lot of people think like that. Yeah. A lot, like you made me. A lot of people think that. Oh, I'm depressed, and they don't even realize. No, you're just going through grief. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, a lot of the the symptoms and signs go the waves, for grief too. look different for everybody. Mm-hmm. So you may be experiencing insomnia you may think that you have adult adhd or something like that (laughs) but it could be grief that is unresolved Mm -hmm. that you need to deal with so seeking therapy is also a good option as well y'all see the chat be real real and we're going through real life so y'all if tell a friend to tell another friend to tell them and find somebody to talk to i'm so happy i got my girls to talk to in the chat Right here, I'm glad we was able to talk to y'all about this. If you need anything, we're going to leave some resources at the bottom and on our page. We thank y'all so much because the podcast has really helped us get through our grief. Mm -hmm. So don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. If you still want to sign up for the Love of Bunny. (gasps) Yes, Love of Bunny. (laughs) Make sure that you sign up. And I'm Tony B. I'm B. And I'm Jen Bunny. And we are <laughs> the Group Chat Live. Bye, Bye guys. We Bye. love y'all. Go to church. Go to church. Go to church. Happy I'm- Easter. <laughs> Get them eggs. Get them eggs.